If an AI entered an art show for a cash prize, would you vote for it? What if I told you that artificial intelligence is already winning art shows for money, and that the AI that was used was trained by other artists' work without their consent? This video will be diving into the new AI image generation platform called Midjourney, and its groundbreaking implications in the world of art. Midjourney caught headlines in 2022. Jason Allen, a video game designer, found himself in the middle of the art war when he decided to enter the Colorado State Fair Art Contest. Being a game designer, he figured he would try to submit an AI-generated art piece that was created with the new Midjourney AI platform. Contestants ranged from teenagers to late adults who submitted paintings, clay creations, to collages. Some contestants even spent months putting together their art, while Jason put a few prompts into an AI generating his art within seconds. The results came through, and Jason's AI-generated art was voted first place and won a $300 prize. From this art show, the results caught international attention concerning whether it was appropriate for an AI to participate in art, let alone win. Questions arose whether David should be awarded the prize, the AI company, or the millions of the other artists that helped train the AI. For Jason, the original submission to use the platform was an interesting idea. In fact, he even labeled the submission via Midjourney. However, upon examining the art, we can see that his name had no mention of AI and that the art was being sold for $750. A bit deceiving, but nevertheless showcases that the average viewer considers AI generated by Midjourney on the same level as human art. So what is Midjourney? Midjourney is an, an image generation AI platform that was initially released on July 12th, 2022. With this platform, a user can enter in a few prompts such as imaginary landscape, geometric shapes, lush forests, and return the AI generates a series of images based off of the request. An absolute surreal display of AI advancement. In order for this to happen, there are a few pieces needed. A language model to understand the context of the user prompts. Two, Proper deep generative AI models. In this case, they probably use the fusion models which have emerged in 2022 as a powerful new family of deep generative models with groundbreaking performance in many applications including image synthesis, video generation, and molecular design. So how does this AI know how to create a lush forest when a user enters that request? Well, that is what the dirty part is. In order to create an AI model or train an AI, Midjourney was fed millions of images and the associative word. For instance, if a tree was requested, the model would be trained with different variations of tree or the word goth, having variations of goth. But where did Midjourney get these images? David Hulls, the founder of Midjourney, in an interview with Forbes magazine, recently admitted the company's AI was trained on hundreds of millions of images without the consent from the authors. The founder replied that there isn't any metadata where you can find the initial author of the art. In addition, artists don't have the ability to opt out of their training process as the founder stated, we are working on that. In 2023, Sarah Anderson, Kelly McKernan, and Carla Ortiz filed a lawsuit against Midjourney hoping to level the playing field when it comes to artist rights and AI taking over. Many AI platforms now are facing lawsuits besides Midjourney, such as Dali E. Leading artists are pushing back with the no to AI art movement where artists are collectively making the general public aware of the war on art. Which leads us to our next section, ethical concerns about AI-generated art. The ethical side regarding AI-generated art is a pretty slippery slope. Image art, unlike physical art, is very easy to copy. Weird Undead, a Russian artist, said she became suspicious of theft when she saw a user mention a tweet beneath a tweet of hers that featured images promoting her most recent artwork. Later, she found that her artwork was being sold on the world's biggest NFT market, OpenSea. After filing suit, the token disappeared from the site. However, it's nearly impossible to prevent people in the future from stealing her work. The music industry has also gone through a wave of theft in the 2010s. Think about the days where it was possible to download your favorite band on popular platforms such as LimeWire, Kazaa, without any consequences. However, over time, lawsuits started to pile up and each website was collectively taken down until only a few remained. Even on this video, I'm not able to play a song without getting marked with a copyright infringement if there is a copyright on that song. But what about freelance artists who upload their art gallery to their website? 
anyone can screenshot their art, download it without permission or without paying the original creator. And what about photographers? Should they receive residuals as well if AI uses their work? It's similar to the original Snapchat days where snaps would be quote unquote deleted, but actually they weren't. People were able to take screenshots of the snaps and if not that, they can take out a phone and take a picture of their phone with a snap on it. Hence, there is a dilemma. When enforcing the rights of artists with technology, when that technology makes it so easy to steal the work of artists. To complicate things further, many image generators were trained on the LAION dataset, a collection of 5.6 billions of images scraped without permission from the internet. Many artists find their digital art in this dataset, but without their permission. Not only artists need to look out, but also companies like Getty, a paid image service, found 12 million other images in this data set. In a digital world built on sharing, are tech companies entitled to everything we post online? The lawsuit against AI image generation. If a monkey took a selfie, who would own the rights? Between 2011 to 2018, a dispute took place where a monkey took a selfie and the owner of the camera demanded that a few websites take down the photos the monkey took. The court ruled that since it was a non-human animal, the rights were owned in the public domain. AI image generation also counts as non-human. In March 2023, the US Copyright Office released a statement of the policy ruling that work made using AI were not eligible for copyright. A big win for artists as it would be a legal nightmare where AI could create all variations of a picture and sue anyone who created something identical. With AI generated art, the end result is not exact replica of the image it was trained on, but rather a transformed one. Since the new image does not look exactly like the other images, the AI images dodges the traditional copyright infringement. However, lawyers pursuing these new platforms are having to adjust their approach and pursue these companies based off of the derivative image, making it much more difficult to copyright over style which has never been protected before. In the past, Humans have never been sued for similar styles of art, so it is unlikely that AI won't as well. With new image generation technology, the implications of art-generated AI are enormous. Newer and up-and-coming artists will still face the dark reality that AI will be able to only create mounds of art faster than anyone, but also create art at the same level as beginning artists. Think about jobs such as graphic designers, photographers, illustrators, all start somewhere. There's a possibility now that a potential client will go to an AI, AKA Midjourney, versus a human due to speed and price. The same thing can be said for business owners going to a WordPress template site than hiring human web developers to build their website. To understand this concept in a more tangible sense, try using ChatGPT to answer a question. With the AI's help, you can generate a response that can usually be around the level of a writer in middle school. ChatGPT could replace a middle school essay, but probably not a college one. AI usually never gives you a perfect product without human help, but it does help make someone much more productive by generating a simple answer faster. While we advance in AI imagery, there's also a whole bag of cybersecurity issues such as forgeries, defakes, online identity manipulation. Imagine a few images that were able to create an entire story of you breaking the law. This image from Midjourney went viral during the time of President Trump, where someone prompted Midjourney to create an image of Donald Trump being arrested. It might be entertaining when a celebrity is deepfaked, but what if that started happening to everyone, even you? The technology is already there. Another implication of AI imagery is some people argue that the ability to paint is dying. For instance, a 82-year-old amateur painter attempted to restore the almost century old fresco of Jesus. Unfortunately, the restoring process didn't go as planned, but it became an internet meme, which led to hundreds of people visiting this small town in Spain, which unexpectedly revived the town through the money coming from tourism. On the other hand, this new technology will also bring in new jobs like AI prompt engineers. Basically, people who know how to work AI by giving it prompts are increasing exponentially. The tech blind spot. As someone who grew up in Silicon Valley, has a degree in computer science, 
and worked as a software engineer for some time. I have always been surprised at how blind some techies are to technology implications. For example, a veteran art director and artist for gaming and entertainment, Jason Huan, reflected about the progress of AI image generation as follows. The progress is exponential. It will allow more people who have solid ideas and clear thoughts to visualize things which were difficult to achieve without years of art training or hiring highly skilled artists. The definition of art will also evolve since rendering skills might not be the most essential. While this might sound bevelent and overall positive to the end user, on closer examination there are some pretty alarming things about this quote. First off, allowing more people to have solid ideas and clear thoughts without years of art training. This statement in its essence is what getting a degree in art, graphic design is all about, helping others bring their ideas to life. While this statement seems like it's empowering people, the end user, which it is, at the same time it simultaneously shifts the idea of expertise from human to AI. The second part is a bit odd as well. Since rendering skills might not be the most essential. Saying that rendering skills might not be the most essential throws a nice wrench into the journey of becoming a great artist. A lot of what makes art is the struggle of years of experience to arrive at a painting or a finished work. For instance, the Mona Lisa took four years to paint, while well, the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo took five years, where he would often work 18-hour days. Would you want to build something that makes the ability to make art obsolete? Similarly to how auto-tune has been argued to both benefit and hurt the music industry at the same time, while well, singers basically don't need to sing very well, the ability to transfer the idea from a feeling using a person as a conduit into the physical manifestation is a skill that can be only acquired through hard work. So wouldn't instant art devalue art? I believe a lot of techies overlook the unexpected consequences in the pursuit of the end customer without understanding what that might do to the legacy of art. Where do we go from here? Image AI generation will definitely make artists more productive and make the world of art creation much more feasible. However, the short-term idea of art will probably be overrun by the change of the definition of art itself. Musicians have seen this in the music industry, actors and writers are seeing this in the world of writing, and now artists are seeing technology creep in and fundamentally change the way things are. Today, five-year-olds are now learning video editing technology and two-year-olds can operate iPads. As the younger generation takes the reins of technology, if a three-year-old is asked in school to paint something for their parents to see, and the child makes an AI-created image. Would the parents value it? Probably not, but why? While a three-year-old never makes world-renowned art, their parents still hang their children's picture on the wall because of its imperfection. It's the imperfections and the striving for perfection that makes art so nostalgic. That brief time when the child didn't realize that hands weren't the size of people's heads. The nuances, the imperfections, that makes art just art. It's up to us to remember that perfect art is not human because we're not perfect. And that is what makes us human. Embracing our imperfections. Thank you for listening to this video. If you like this content, make sure to like and subscribe. Till next time.